Welcome to Forever Exiled. I'm Justin, aka Tags. And I'm Tyler, Wrecker of Days. Episode 230. No, 330. My goodness. 300. Wait, 330? Oh. All right. Is look that at right? Us. Is that right? Are we at 330 or 230? I mean, they say 330 and 331. That seems really high. No, well, no there's no way we're that. No, I think, <laughs> I think it's 230. 230. Well, See, it's, it's is, one uh, of the two. I'm Ron Burgundy? <laughs> I just, <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Okay. I just read what's sound. on the screen. No, I know you are. <laughs> we're not scripted, but I'm reading the script. And it said 330. You keep That's going. Awesome. All I'll, right, well, welcome to episode 230 of Forever Exiled. Not three thirty. Yeah. We'll be there eventually. No, it's though. two. It's two thirty. Two thirty. All let, right. Sweet. Let me let me just make some edit. You you keep going away. You go be thankful, Justin. Yeah, you go be thankful. Big shout out to our patrons. Thanks everybody who resubbed up this week, and uh, special thanks to Milo for boost in Discord. Thank you so much. Helping out with uh, our Patreon gets access to After Dark. It's our podcast after the podcast. We just continue to rock and roll and jive like cool. Whoops, didn't have D and D on. Anyway, uh, that's our After Dark. So. Thanks, everybody. And uh, if you want to support the podcast, go check out our Patreon because it'll get you access to After Dark, our podcast <laughs> after the podcast. <laughs> OK, you're done. Uh, but um, I love our Discord, Dis- Discord community. So thank you for Agreed. the boosts for those that do do that every month. That's a lot. And uh, we just have a fantastic Discord community and I'm very it thankful for it. The best in all of POE. Agreed. How was your week this week, man? Oh, I, I wasn't ready much. for this. No, um, my week was, my week was good. It was busy, but it was really good. It was, I played a little bit of last epoch, but we'll get into that, uh, later on when we talk about our week and POE, cause I didn't play POE this week, but I did play last epoch. And then what else did I do this week? We just kind of hung out. My, uh, my, my girls are in the, both in that bracket of teeth removal and falling out. So I've had, teeth uh, removal. <laughs> Well, they fall out, you know, uh, my, well, they fall. I have, so my kids are all been so different when it comes to teeth falling out, like tooth fairy okay. type stuff. My oldest, uh, would not let you pull his teeth out. Like we used to try when he would sleep and he would still fight. He did. He just was too worried or worked up about the pain and he would become flipping bananas about it to the point where his teeth were like hanging his teeth, his other tooth would be coming out. And his shell of a tooth would be hanging and he still would be freaking out if you tried to pull it out. <laughs> and, and this then, is yeah, your my, eldest? That's my oldest. Yeah. So he's thankfully lost all his teeth now, so doesn't have to deal with that anymore. But then my that's girls right. are like animals. Like my nine-year-old, the uh, Tuesday came home from school and she's like, dad, I, and she had just taken a tooth out, like one of the incisors or whatever. Uh, she can't, she'd come home on Tuesday and she's like, I was biting and I, I felt my tooth and I, well, I think one of my molars is loose. I was like, oh, all right, that's cool. And then yesterday after school, she went to dance and then she came home and I said to Christine, I'm like, where's Sophia? She's like, she's in the bathroom. She's convinced she's getting that tooth out. 20 minutes later, she comes, she's like, I got it. She literally <laughs> will just like tear a tooth out. So she's got like a two space gap on the lower side. That's so. hilarious. Did she put the drill back where it belongs? <laughs> I don't know what she does. <laughs> but man, when she thinks she's going to get a tooth out, she is committed. That's hilarious. My wife's that, so. the psycho in the family when it comes, like she gets so excited when the kids have, it's time for their teeth to get removed. And so yeah. she, she's the one that's willing to do the, like Pulling. tie the string around and yeah, then yeah, use yeah. the door and that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I don't, I don't like that kind of stuff. That. Like, well, no, to me, I'm like, <laughs> there's billions of people, there, you're, th- there's billions of people in the world. Like, the teeth will come out. It'll be fine. Like it'll get loose. You could just pull it out and that's how it goes. Uh, but my kids are good at pulling out their own teeth. Neither of them are squirmy about it, but my son is uh, very self-conscious about it though, because he's also nine, but he's had like two teeth fall out yeah. and a lot of his other friends have had half their mouth. Fall sure. out. So, you know, instead of like talking about like who they, you know, like when they're older and the issues and the stuff they're going to talk about in high school, now Oliver's like, yeah, but they've had more teeth fall out than I have. Mm-hmm. Anyway, keep going. No, no. So yeah, our youngest is not quite to the same degree as Sophia. So she'll, she's no problem. She'll just sit there. She's like, all right, it's ready to come out. And so I can grab it and just like yank. But even if I don't get it, the first pull, she just kind of goes like, uh, and just stares at me. And I'm like, all right, quick. And then just 
it mm. comes out again but yeah so somewhere i'm sure the tooth fairy has some balled up collection disgusting collection of our kids teeth so it's uh yeah no it, you know it was a good week overall i i i i started playing a mobile game on my phone i don't play games on my phone i'm just never i know i've tried to it. get you to play a couple games like very 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 passive you don't do anything except for remember they exist games you're like no i don't play mobile I, games i just don't i've never liked games on my phone i've never yeah, uh, yeah I, don't, so I don't know you're just playing a mobile game great but it's a uh it's like a brain stuff like it's just a thinking it's it's a combination actually of like minesweeper and sudoku okay yeah it's it's called um pixel puzzle collections it's actually made by konami and it it takes on a lot of their um like the the pixel they take pixel art from their video games and you're doing a, a puzzle and when you do the puzzle you unlock this piece and it's it's a, right. it's a yeah it's just a a mind thinking game so it's been kind of chill to just in the evenings i pull that up and play for a little bit and but other than good that, for you yeah, it's you I know do, I do that. I play good. cross math. It's um, math equations, but as crossword puzzles, but it's math oh, equations cool. instead. Yeah, I yeah I do that every night. Yeah, I find them fun. It's I, I just I can't get into like turn the phones. Why why would I want to play on a tiny little screen like this when I have a giant screen in my office? And then also my phone, I just it's typically work, and so I don't want to play on it. I just want to put it away, which never happens, but. So this is secretly turning into a PoE Mobile episode. <laughs> the PoE Mobile will be a thing. I, it won't be a thing that I'll do. I'll try it so we can talk about it. But yeah, that's not. It's not a thing I'm eagerly awaiting. <laughs> it better be free. <laughs> yeah, Watch, that's the game they charge money for. That's the one they should charge money for. You make piss loads of money, and I love mobile games that don't no. charge you money and don't get like this pixel puzzle one doesn't get. It's got ads on it but they don't affect me yep. playing the game i don't have to pay for anything extra to do the game so yeah um otherwise though man yeah good week it was just busy good. um you know some some sad stuff going on in some of our friends lives but uh just family wise but you know just unfortunately part of life so how was your week hmm. my week was good uh, today the kids witnessed uh crow in our front yard and I, I i went outside and i saw this crow like trying to move this leaf i'm like that's weird just uh -oh. pick the leaf up and go so then anyway i kept going around and then all of a sudden the kids noticed that uh the crow in our front yard was i don't know i've never bothered looking into the difference between a mole and a vole but it was one of the two the crow was trying to slowly peck at and in the slowest possible way kill this vole and so my kids of course love every living thing and they go out there and they s try and scare the crow away and then they're staring at the vole and don't know how to help it because one of its front legs doesn't work anymore and i mean it's a mole or a vole it needs its legs to, <laughs> to dig right so anyway it was an interesting morning and they're like oh it's so cute even though it's like dying and <laughs> twitching Did the crow and freaking get to out it then? no not eventually my <clears throat> my kids like they're blind right and my kids i don't know how but the no, your kids. mole or vole ended up <laughs> getting back, which was maybe 15 feet away from it, into the hole that it originally came out of. Hmm. So it didn't have to dig. The hole was already there. And I told the kids that I'm going to kill it as soon as they leave. As soon as I get home, I'm going <laughs> to crucify it on the tree because it just oh, destroys. Oh, it kills everywhere. Oh, and it's but yeah, but, like it's hole that it was trying hmm. to get back to is in the garden. And there's two. So... There's two plants that all my other plants are budding. They're ready for spring. And I mean, we kind of had a, like a, a little deep fake going on this this spring. We had some snow this week, but it was ridiculous. Uh, we Right. <laughs> but we uh, all my bushes are like, yay, it's springtime, except for two. But the brand two of the three new ones that I bought last year, I bought three nice hydrangea plants, only one. And it has huge buds going on whereas the other two are just like no nope, not gonna happen maybe we're not dead ready yet. Mm -hmm. and i'm like oh dang it are you kidding me that was like 25 bucks each so they better not be because i though i did everything right don't they, they live be, through like anything fine. yes i feel like i mean they're, all plants are more fragile the younger they are and so it was still going through its first season but mm -hmm. anyway i didn't do anything wrong just like when i die in poe i didn't do anything wrong it's not my fault did you are you gonna actually try and get rid of this mole vole whatever it is no, 
you know, if I see it, I'll smack it or kick it or like pick it up and throw it on the neighbor's <laughs> yard so Come they can get all the there. stupid mounds instead of me. When we but, were growing um, up, uh, we used to have them where we lived as kids yeah. and it was a different time. It was a different time. I'm not sure you could do it anymore, but the, I remember but we can talk these, about it. <laughs> we can talk about it. We can reminisce. They used to have these things that would go. You'd put them above the hill that like a mole had built. Yep. It was a device that you would put above it. <laughs> and when the mole would dig back up through it, it would actually fire a shotgun shell straight. <laughs> ah, yes. You know, I think I saw one of those traps in one of the Saw movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but anyway. that's that's pretty awesome. No, you know what? Dead is dead. Great. Yeah. You know what? Don't wreck Find my lawn. someone else's lawn. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just swim across the ocean. Find another forest. You'll be fine. Um, but yeah, so anyway, last week I was talking about spreading all that seed, mm-hmm. the lawn seed. I should emphasize in case people's <laughs> minds are in the good eyes, spread a whole bunch of seed last week. If you, you didn't though, did you, you were just thinking about it. We're talking about lawn seed. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I did, but oh, it was because did. it was an oh. old bag. Right. Okay. And so I'm like, you know what? Let's just sprinkle it everywhere. Not, yeah, no, this is working doing out well. very well. And, yeah, I know. Okay, let's let. I'm just going to put it all over the lawn. Yeah, the seed. Keep your seed, seed on the lawn. All over mm-hmm. the lawn, <laughs> and uh, and I was just like, you know what? Let's just see how it grows. I, I grass always grows better when you completely ignore it as opposed to baby it. So let's just let it go and happen. And I was snow. looking at the weather forecast for the next 14 days. I'm like, this is perfect. Only one night. It's going to get down to one degree. Every other night we're looking at five degrees. It's going to be rainy for like, it's at least 70% chance of rain for nine out of the 14 days. I'm like, you can't get better than this. This is great. So I'm going to go for it. And I was saving my brand new bag that I just bought for like mid March or whenever it is that, you know, frost is actually done. Yep. All of a sudden, like, Three nights ago, we get a dump of snow in the middle of the night, and we get this Arctic wind warning for it. It was awful. Like for forty-eight hours, it turned into like winter again. I'm like, damn. So, I mean, again, it was an old bag of seed, but seed still would have grown. So I kind of wasted it, and so that kind of sucked. But yeah, those two hydrangeas better better bloom. Mm -hmm. But just you know what just finished right now? Just happened just now. Friday, nine fifteen a.m. What? The first qualifying of the Formula One season is done. I know I had to when I first popped onto Discord, you were not there and I had my headphones on and I could hear what sounded like F1 talk. So that's why I took the headphones off. I was like, no, nope, uh, not going to do anything. Yeah, it's we're back. It's exciting. Okay, are. I have a question about F1. I would have asked you this in After Dark, but you're welcome, everyone else. Uh, why are there so many races on Saturday this year? I don't know. I looked at that's my calendar. I had to re my calendar twice because I was like, something's wrong. There's got to be something wrong here, but there were so many races that were happening technically our time on Saturday. Um, you know, probably why? Hmm. Christian Horner. Hmm. I'll blame him. My guess is the scheduling conflicts with American football. Really? I think so. You're not getting live audiences because people aren't waking up at certain times and you're getting... um. That's my guess. That's my guess. And then, of course, because it's already recorded, well, you have an a.m., afternoon, and p.m. for your races. And if you are really trying, I I don't know if it has anything to do with the American market, but if it does, some tracks will be capable of holding an an evening race on Saturday. I mean, again, you're looking at a 24-hour fan base, right? Like, who knows who is where? So, It is revolving around something specific Uh, for the tracks that are in cities. You're probably not going to be able to have that kind of leeway, but tracks like Bahrain, where it's just an independent track, that's all it is in the middle of nowhere. You can pick whatever time you want. So that's my Mm -hmm. guess, but I haven't looked into it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It was just surprising to see so many that were on uh, on Saturday. But yeah, that's cool. I'm going to watch that before we record After Dark this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Did you get? Oh, no, I guess you're not going to get started on your lawn yet, eh? Uh, no, <laughs> I was, I felt better about my decision to wait when I was looking at the freaking snow coming down and in the backyard. Yeah. I was going to message you about that, but then I'm like, I no, you, I you thought, know what? I'm not, not going to happen. <laughs> That's right. He can enjoy it on his own. Him and his guy, whatever. Yeah. I, I, it's, it, we're getting closer to it, but, uh, I haven't, I haven't done anything. It's going to be a bit of a job, so I'm not super looking forward to it. It's a fun but, job, man. It's like the only house job I like. 
dealing with outdoor gardens and lawns. I, I like dealing with the lawn. This is a fix, though, not a fun fix, because I'm going to have to rip same. a bunch of it up and put new stuff down. And yeah, but it'll be it'll be coming up pretty soon. I'm just I'm waiting out this weather because it's been cold, man. Even at night, it's been quite cold. Like when I yeah. take the dog out at night at bed. It's, it's I still you. quite I get cold, up out so. of bed and I have to tell my wife I was in the pool. I was in the pool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what else just came and went though? Just like the snow that we had the private league. It's that was done. awesome. Thank you everyone yeah, for playing. We for had playing. such a great time. I don't think I've spent more time than any other league than I did this thing. Wait, did I, I say think that you right? set records for creating that, characters? I did. Mm -hmm. Um, I also had a really good total character level. If you combine them all, thanks to the loan. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh, but no, it's, uh, I, I had fun. It was fun to watch everybody go through and the living thing. I, I feel really bad for people that progress. They get to like, you know, level 120, not really, but you know, and then they die and then our reward so you of ranking bad. You start legends. You bad? Oh yeah. For that and then, part. you know, like all of it's about the living characters, but I kind of like that aspect of it. Like you feel bad because like, oh, they were doing so well. They didn't, and they're not getting any recognition, but then it's like, I don't know you you while you're playing i gotta remember like while you're playing you're like you know what i'm 96. do i stop right keep going right. Yeah, 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 yeah. We used so, to have, it's funny because somebody did ask in the private league chat they're like has it always been living characters i was like yep and of course somebody was like uh no it hasn't and i was like really so i went back and looked through the announcement sure enough we we started like two two private leagues ago but i do remember why and that was because there, we wanted that risk reward to how far yeah. do you push your character to be first place. So, yeah, living only. You're yeah. dead. You're nothing to us. <laughs> that's right. You're out. It's it's not. Yeah, that's right. So but it was uh, fun. Congrats to was. everybody who uh, who did well. If you don't have your um, legend status and you got legend, make sure you message Tyler. Or I I haven't had a chance to go through them yet. I know Tyler did so. We have almost all of them. There's only three or four people that haven't messaged for their legend status in Discord. But Sweet. please, double if you're not sure, double check. Yeah, it's in the legend uh, channel. So if your name's yeah. there, they just don't match up. We see PoE names. They don't always match up with Discord names. So, mm -hmm. uh, And uh, just be prepared. Next private league, I am going to be pushing very hard for minion or sorry, um, Enemies have increased life. Why? Added to it. More misery. I would also <laughs> like to, this is a, a cheesy personal shout out, but I want to, I want to congratulate my wife on how well she did in hardcore. It was only her second playthrough. Her first playthrough, she only got to like act four. Mm -hmm. Right. And so yeah. she's going through her second playthrough and she did awesome in hardcore. I can't remember what she, she died did really to. Well. I saw the she video. She died to piety in oh, act, the bleed the version. Right. The yeah. bleed version of act. And there's nothing in the game like there was like the beam she's never done the fight before so the tells don't mean anything to her yet and the first time she does the spinning beam like right when it started like it started right on, on Aaron and then it started spinning but there's like nothing like that was crazy bleed right then you have your corrupted blood and all that so it was and if you're not instant. ready for that and don't aren't aware of what she's about to do that yeah. fight is that fight has killed me so many times and I know the fight well. Mm -hmm. I it's like my first test in a new in a character, especially in hardcore where I'm like, oh god, this is probably where it ends. Sure, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so, very good job. Anyway, it was a lot of fun. Thank you everyone. Looking forward very much to the next one and is there going to be a next one though? Yeah, there's going to yeah, be a next one. Next it's one. once the beta starts. Then what are we going to do? Might is that going to be? We'll have to see. <laughs> that uh, will be the to... first time you and I play Path of Exile One is for our private league. Oh yeah, that, I guess we'll have to figure that out. Do, do we have all? I guess I think that we're still waiting for one more response. So we can two more. Still, still waiting what? for two more responses. Even though I for sent a message. Who's private? Okay. Yeah. Well, if you if you won, make sure you check your your. POE messages on the path. It, of sorry, website. if you won a uh, prize from the random drop price. Yeah. Legends, yeah. you don't get anything. Just you got the best one color. of all. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, because I, I, I'll send that email once we have them all in. That is not an email I'm looking forward to writing. It'll be great, Justin. <laughs> they probably have changed their I'm ways. I'm sure they've fixed everything. Yeah. It's Gifting it is for people so to give us money. much easier now. Mm -hmm. What do we got this week in POE? Well, we had a zombie build for the build of the week. Get out. 
No, I'm joking. It wasn't the real zombie build. It was a falling zombie oh, falling build. But zombie. I still relate. I still relate. Like, it's something zombie, still counts. so that's fine. Still counts. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, it's the exact, what is it? It's like, um, what's it like? The old Firestorm. It's kind of like Firestorm. The, okay. the falling zombie, technically. Sure. Except, for some reason, there's a duration. Uh, like, you want the zombie. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Anyway, it, yeah, it's 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 kind of like that. But anyway, it was a very complicated build. Uh, a lot of unique requirements to it, but it was basically cyclone, cast while channeling, and then falling zombies with a whole did, bunch did of stuff to make it crazy strong. Oh yeah, he obliterates huh. people. Interesting. What's his name? Harry Hermes. Harry, Harry Hermes. Hermes. I might see that. So, yeah. anyway, it was a really cool build. I mean, it was complicated beyond belief, but I mean, it was that's normal, and that was it was cool. It was really neat, and they added uh, a song. What was it? Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the oh, bodies hit the yeah, it was fun. So I'm, I enjoy how much GGG takes from the community and adds fun to it. And sure. Yeah, I really like it. Cool. Uh, but biggest news of the week, which is all sad, but also fine because it's the end of the league. Uh, the Ancestor Mystery Box microtransactions. Okay, Ancestor last was, la was last league. Mm -hmm. So not only are they out, that's uh, don't they normally take two leagues to come out? Mm -mm. No, I think it's the following league. Oh, no. Ancestor. Oh, no. Trials of the Ancestors. That was last league. Yeah. Like they, hmm. anyway, they're already on the sale, league. which oh, I mean, sale. some of the sale, Wait, do you yeah, mean on, on sale or on, in the, in the, no, like discounted sale is what oh, I mean. Interesting. So they've already been released, but now they're on a discounted sale. And so, um, that's actually been making a lot of easy noise in the community because the timekeeper map device is got so it. popular. Yeah, you do. <laughs> so Did this guy, it? I got it for the, uh, console. Mm -hmm. I am going to buy one for the guild, but I wanted to double check before I bought one for the guild uh, on PC. I want to double check with you if I have a guild hideout decoration or sorry, a guild map device mm -hmm. at like a different MTX. Everybody sees that, right? I would think so. Even if I'm not there, like when you've been in the guild hideout, you've seen the flower map device that I have. I, I, I don't remember, but we can easily test that. Okay, because one thing I would like to test with you is if I buy, see, <sighs> guild stuff's always weird because sometimes they remove features for the guild version of something, right? Like, remember that massive, expensive, but really cool hideout that it displayed on the floor? Yeah, the, the Atlas one. The Atlas, but for the guild, it didn't, mm -hmm. which is crazy. So I don't know if the timing would work as a guild device. Right? We like, can test it, and you can also, if it doesn't work, you can email them. They'll refund it. I hope so, because yeah. the whole point of me getting it, of course, is for the timer. Mm -hmm. But there'd be no point in me buying it for the guild if, yeah, it doesn't like, work. If for I'm anybody. using it with you, I would expect it to work. But if I'm not online and you use it as someone in the guild, and you start from the guild, not from your own hideout, but you start from the guild, I want to know if you get the timer when you're in the sure. map or not. Yeah. So, yeah, we can test right, cool. that. Cool. Right on. Now I have let the body sit the flow in my head. <laughs> uh, trial of the ancestor support packs end soon. So people that are getting their, we're not going to wait too long. We're not going to let people that responded right away for the prizes for our private league. We're not going to screw them. We're no, going to send we'll have that to order e for email sure in like quite quickly. So please, the latest. Uh, for those that haven't responded, please do so soon. I always forget that GGG has comics digital and real one the digital comics they're cool they're only four bucks american for a digital comic better be more than five pages but that's awesome i wonder yeah. how much of the lore is so path of exile 2 lore right obviously it's all connected it's only 20 years later it can all easily connect in so many different ways i'm curious you know when because the the writing is 10 years old now mm -hmm. right for the story and the original writing, I mean, even before that, you're coming up with the lore. So that's, you know, two years before the game comes out or whatever. And it's a different person. So, you know, I'm curious, like when the current writer is going through and they're looking at stuff, it's like, oh, I really hate that about this story. I know it's canon, but can I get around not bringing that up again or anything like that? I'm curious now that I'm looking. So GGG has a uh, it was just reminding everybody that they have comics. Uh, you can buy physical copies or digital copies. I think it was no, just digital I think copies. It's just but digital. the digital mm -hmm. copies uh, can come with MTX or just exclusively as the uh, comic itself. But 
I'm curious how much the background story of the characters we have, the seven classes, how much that's going to carry into the new game. Like they're not doing the same introduction to Path of Exile 2 that they were originally doing. And remember how stoked we were with that original 29, was it 2019 Exile mm-hmm. Con? Where all seven characters are on the... To be hung. Yeah. I mean, what's that called? The gallows, gallows. right? And, uh, and then, you know, the character you choose to start with is the one that escapes and the rest get hung. So, okay, <laughs> their characters aren't going through. Maybe their backgrounds, histories, the Karui, you know, that all carries through. But I don't know. When I see these comics here, I'm like, I wonder how valid they're going to be once Path of Exile 2 comes out and the writer that hopefully stays as the writer, you know, keeps going on. And I don't well, know. they can they always be valid, though, right? They can just be the history of because as things go further, it's just progressing yeah. the story. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, let's think about that. And uh, Taiwan is now... I don't know. I, I, I mean, this isn't relevant to us, but it's relevant to others. But it says, what does it say? The Garena Path of Exile servers in Taiwan have now permanently shut down. Our players in Taiwan are able to migrate their ex- existing accounts to the Hot Cool Remain, a realm. Chinese traditional. Yep. Uh, right. Realm. A chi- traditional Chinese version of Path of Exile on Steam is now also live. Cool. I don't know what that means, but good as long as people can play. Yes. Hopefully that's good news. So anyway. That's the week, man. Yeah. Wow. What? On that post, it says find out more about migration process here. The Path yeah. of Exile, I'm assuming this is the as yes, the Chinese site, looks so much there. What is happening with that dragon coming out of something and the scroll? It looks migration so migration process starts here. Yeah, if you just if you click it and scroll oh. down just a little bit, the I've never seen that dragon before. Oh, it's probably not in game. Probably is in game. It's probably your pet that picks everything up. <laughs> right? It flies around. It's your, it's your mantra. It's your aura. That's cool. How was your week? Did you play? Yeah, I played. I made some final decisions for myself in regards to my build. Kind of, almost. I was going to say of. final. Mm, no, but I have some testing to do. It'll cost me about twenty six regrets. So, uh, and even though I'm in standard, I still don't, I don't play often. So, um, you know, I only have like 200 regrets. So yeah, yeah, 26 isn't much out of 200, but you change your mind five times and all of a sudden you're like, I can't probably actually change my mind. Or unless it's on console. Yeah, it's on console. Um, but let's see, I made a couple posts this week and neither of them received much negative feedback. Hooray for Tyler. (laughs) The first one was a follow up on the hopeful future of minions. Remember, Jonathan responded to a minion post on Reddit on um, PoE2's Reddit a while ago and was asking what people wanted that just, you know, individual opinions as to what people liked in their minion build. So I responded with a nice lengthy one. Um, And one thing that I was, I mean, hopefully encouraged by was that he did read them and it does seem like he he reads all this stuff um but there was small references in one of his interviews about some specific points that i had brought up so it was encouraging to feel like my post was or like my reply was read but there was one thing that i realized is very important to me that i forgot about and i re-realized that this this week and so it's, it's not overly lengthy, but and I'm not going to read it, but it was basically um, minion builds are fun and I like permanent minion builds, but permanent minion builds in this game for two separate reasons require a lot of babysitting. You know what I mean? Like, um, uh, so let's use zombies. I always have to make sure I have the proper amount of zombies, right? So let's say I have eight zombies. Well, I am on a regular basis is just part of the game double checking making sure i don't have seven zombies i have eight i need that dps that's the whole reason i'm getting the extra zombies right but then i, when have I first Phantasms. i just want to throw in sorry yeah. to throw into that when i first played zombies was the first build i played back in the the beta times and there Probably was no the counter there oh was no, man <laughs> there right was no number yeah it was wow. tough you know that's kind of like, like one two three four no oh, damn it i counted him one two three four right. <laughs> and and that was when they were moving really fast they were making lots of sound like that was a different time too yeah. they've definitely slowed them down so but it's just things like then I have 10 summon phantasms. Okay, well, I know those are automatic and that's awesome, but I'm still checking in combat to see if they're surviving combat or if 
you know, I'm only spawning three and then they die and then like five and then they die down to three, whatever it is. Right. Right. But then I have two specters, right? One offensive, one defensive super, but I'm always checking to make sure my specter counts at two. Right. And then I have a golem. Well, I got to make sure that golem's on, but you know, I've, I've, and again, guardians blessing support perfectly balanced. Like I've said, in my opinion, tons, but it's a babysitting skill. I'm constantly making sure my golems up. So yes, I'm trying to do a passive minion build by just being zombies, but I have so much to look after just to make sure that the build's working or I didn't come across a stupid rare that had a crazy cold dot on the ground and wiped out half my team, whatever it is. Like I'm always having to make sure that it's there and ready and fully capable or not fully capable, but fully functioning. And that's not a very, um, do you think like the opposite it be like of, that? well, here's the thing. You don't play zombies and to babysit at all. You know what I mean? But at the same time, no, it doesn't have to be like that. But right now, the, this was the second point. Like that's not a fun experience to make sure like that's what my build is, even though I'm not doing much to constantly be looking at numbers instead of the gameplay. That's not the fun part of it. So it wasn't like I was trying to provide a solution. I'm just saying like, that's actually just what it is right now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I gave some examples, like there's a lot of stress-free minions out there. Which ones did I say? Um, the Reaper, right? Because it's the same button that respawns it you right with the active uh the two minion heralds skeletons dominating below absolution and golems but with the elementalist keystone those are all wonderful because you don't have to care how many minions you have they're just naturally out there all the time and so those are good examples of more of a stress-free thing but my second point was what you quote unquote need or yeah what you quote unquote need to play with the minion build. And that was stuff like uh, uh, specters with frenzy charges, a guardian's blessing, requiring a golem, maybe, maybe not the animate guardian. You know what I mean? Like the only reason you exclude them is just because you refuse to have them, but you really should have them. Like there's no reason why you shouldn't have them in your build, right? So I was kind of pointing out those two things. Like there's kind of like a required way to play just because of the benefits that those builds, those specific minions provide and how they function. And then of course, what I just mentioned about, you know, zombie counts and limits and how those numbers are sustained. So anyway, I just brought that up, not like as um, a criticism, but just kind of like, uh, you know, it's not as fun as I wish it was because I'm paying very little attention to actual gameplay when I have all of this other stuff going on. So it was just one of those things where I was hoping that there would be a more natural way to play where I would still be playing, but I wouldn't have to worry about stuff. Again, I didn't come up with a solution. It was just one of those kind of observation posts in hopes that that's something that they mull over when they're looking at the different kind of minion skills that they're going to be creating. A lot of people uh, replied to this in terms of like, you know, so far, I think you're going to get what you want because... You know, you see the wolves coming up or you see the bear showing up or whatever it is. And it's like, you know, these minions show up when you do a certain skill, like it's all about trigger combos and stuff. So it does seem to be going in the right direction. But that was something that I kind of wanted to point out where I'm a minion freak and it's difficult to find a build that's actually really fun and carefree to play. I'm kind of curious if minions was ever meant to be a fully passive play style, though. Like, I, I do know what you mean. But I wonder if that's a, like, I wonder if it was meant to be a more because it's interesting. I did look at minions in last epoch and it is a much more active play style. You can do it sure. and it's very, very strong, but it's it's a it, it's more active. It's not just like, a, OK, I summon my, my minions and now I'm a walking thing that kills things. Yeah. I always used to reference before zombies had changed quite a few times over the last couple of years. I used to reference zombies as righteous fire. It's the same thing, you're, mm -hmm. but instead of life regen, you're investing in minion survivability. Yep. Um, and I actually think that's why zombies suck so much. That's that it's on purpose. Like it is passive damage. It's to me like, you know, those two skills, righteous fire and zombie should almost be equal. Like they shouldn't do a lot of damage in that regard because it's passive damage. Right. You're dealing yep. damage as you're running away. Agreed. Right. Mm -hmm. I, right. So I do think there needs to be those options for passive minion gameplay in these games, because otherwise you're having a whole bunch of skills that at the end of the day, do the same thing. Like here, let's see, I, I know it's not a skill, but let's use strong boxes as an example. 
Strong boxes, no matter what the strong box is, it doesn't matter what the strong box is, you click, you run away. Because it doesn't matter what the mod is. Yes, you could have a hundred different mods if you actually cared and read what the mods were. The, the offensive mods, not the ones where it's about what you're going to be getting from your drop, but whether it's, you know, an ice nova, whether it's going to freeze you, whether it's exploding corpses, no matter what the mod is that's going to hurt me or be a detriment to me, I'm treating it the exact same way, right? I click, I move out, wait for the thing to happen, and I kill everything, right? That's just how you treat it, no matter the variety of it. And so if you only have very active minion skills at the end of the day, kind of like SRS, Absolution, like at the end of the day, you treat them the same. You're standing still and you're casting and then you move and you're casting. Yes, the damage type is different, but the play style isn't overly different, right? So yeah, I think you need that to answer your question is why I brought that up. And that's just, I think you need that passive minion style. I agree with myself and you that it needs to be the passive minion style should not be the most powerful version, kind of like Righteous Fire. It needs to be or needed to be kicked down so. or supplemented somehow or whatever. Yeah, right. So I uh, yeah. So anyway, that was one of the posts that I brought up. Uh, what was the second one I brought up? Oh, right. Remember, I was complaining about um, just how Sentinel of Radiance. That's the to the big guy, the big beefy, the first guardian specific minion you get when you're going through that guardian tree in the in the ascendancy yeah the big guy with its own righteous fire i was complaining last week about how it um interacts with controller support right it doesn't act like the totems do or traps or right. other minions it just always goes to the edge of the screen so i sent in that feedback cool mm -hmm. no, i'm sure they're cool. very thankful for it oh good that wrecker guy posted again <laughs> can't wait post. for that Mm -hmm. And uh, what else happened this week while I was figuring things out? Um, oh, I had Hey Perplex from our Discord. I got my pictures mixed up and my apologies. I would have loved to shout you out earlier in the episode, but Perplex this week got a mirror to drop. In I think a it was during the private league, wasn't it? Yes. In a, well, it might have been. I think it was. But it wasn't, it wasn't in yeah, league was. content. Like it wasn't in no, it was just Affliction. It like they didn't it get it from like the June, the... right? It was like normal gameplay mirror yep. drop. So congrats, congrats, perplex. Yeah, I, uh, I couldn't see when when we do our notes and we use an, an app called Trello. Um, the pictures are not done very well in Trello, and I thought that was actually my screenshot. I was and really so I put it down. Here. I was like, that mother effer better not have gotten himself <laughs> yeah, another I get mirror. number two. <laughs> So anyway, yeah. no, so sorry, uh, Perplex, that should have been right at the beginning of the episode. Congrats on your natural mirror drop. That's fantastic. It was in the axe, man. It wasn't mapping. That was in the axe. Mm -hmm. So congrats, congrats. Uh, the screenshot that I thought I took of my own stuff, I got, was it two exalts and a divine or two divines and an exalt? And I know this is like the worst league in the I world to brag <laughs> about like, it. <laughs> but no, it was just normal gameplay. Like I was just in standard. I was just doing a normal map and it must have been one of the um, enemy Conversion conversions. Mm -hmm. But that was the first time that's ever really happened, like where I've had two of something. And so anyway, there were three of them. And I get more excited for exalts than divines because I can actually use them for what they're for. Craft with them, right? Yeah, divines don't... Um, I mean, I, I'm I'm never at a stage where I'm min-maxing my gear to the extent where I'm ro rolling with divines type of thing, but... Either way, um, yeah, so that was it. I had a good week. Um, I'm still with my Reaper build deciding which tree I'm deciding. I've, I've nailed down my skills, but now it's just like, which tree do I use? Do I use the default tree that I'm using, which is really good, but it focuses on armor and uh, for, for my defense, it focuses on armor and increased elemental resists, or do I forego the increased elemental resists and go with block chance? Not capped block chance, but it'd be like 56% and 72% or something like that for spell. Or do I get rid of minion survivability completely and go with both spell and increased res? Now, obviously that makes sense. Everybody's like, yeah, do that one. But I need my Reaper and my Summon Phantasms to live. So we'll see. So that's what I'm playing through, and that's what I'm going to be respecting into this coming week is getting rid of my minion survivability so I can throw it all onto myself. And then I'm going to be doing some juiced content to see if they can survive, you know, uh, an Alcan Goad per se um, Maven invite. Sweet. And if they can live, party on, Garth. 
Okay, before I before we continue, can you just slide your muff down just a little bit? My muff? Yeah. Oh there wow. You, you should have told me that ages ago. I just noticed it. Okay. Uh it must really like me. It just gets growing. <laughs> All right. Keeping that in. Mm-hmm. Okay. Dang it. Um <laughs> so that was me. Um I also, though had something to say about last epoch before you, you get into last epoch no i haven't played it okay but i still want to thank you for when it was alpha eh, i don't know when it was like 20 30 bucks uh you bought it for me ages ago i think you and i played it like a year and a half that, ago yeah. we probably and, did though. uh so there was no multiplayer then though it was just to play correct yeah uh, multiplayer actually wasn't added that long ago just um, this this right. release yeah so anyway, I want to thank you for that. But no, I haven't played it yet. But I was thinking because our whole Discord community, well, not whole Discord, a big good portion of our Discord community has been talking about it. You've been playing it. Obviously, a lot of other people have been playing it. POE nerds just want to play it just to see what else is out there. And to then, of course, give GGG a hard time about all the sweet features that Last Epoch has that GGG doesn't want to implement. All that kind of fun stuff, right? So anyway, originally... If I remember correctly, Path of Exile, now I'm talking 2019, right? Like we're talking Exile Con, Exile Con 1, that's five years ago. I remember like the thought process seemed to be like hoping to release before Diablo 4. You know what I mean? I don't think they expected, of course, you know, with COVID to have it be a five year wait from Exile Con 1 to the release of Path of Exile 2. And Diablo 4 was just a distant like it was confirmed, but it there was no release date. Like it was just, you know, it was more far gone than Path of Exile 2 was, right? So there was the idea or the hope that Path of Exile 2 would be released before Diablo 4, and then they would rake in all those numbers for being like the newest, best ARPG. But now that GGG's only competitors, and in my opinion, and I don't know many of the games out there, but in my opinion, the only two competitors that GGG has outside of like remember when we had ziz on and ziz was like i don't compete against other broadcasters per se other streamers like i compete against everybody i compete against netflix i compete against your mobile phone like whatever you're doing with your time i want it to be with me that's my business whatever else you can choose to do with your time even fixing your car that's my competition so i kind of like that that mentality so but outside of those things in terms of game competition the only two that ggg has are d4 and last epoch right le and both of those are out now. Both of the official versions of those new versions of the game, whether it's the sequel or the first version, they're completely out. And though that wasn't the original plan, they were hoping for the complete opposite. I think that's really, really good for GGG. Really good. Because GGG in the recent interviews has shown how flexible they are at changing things that they used to be quite firm about or even sticks in the mud about, depending on what the subject was. And because GGG has shown that flexibility... Even with stuff like when it comes to trade, they're like, well, Last Epoch does it, so now we have to do it. Kind of like that, a complete twist of mentality. So this has been, in my opinion, the fact that GGG is last out of the three competitors to come out. It's going to work wonders for not necessarily what we want, because as Justin and I have emphasized many times, we know what we want, but we don't know if that's what's best because we don't know half of what Path of XL2 is going to be. Like GGG knows to an extent, like obviously we'd love some information on a death recap, but with how the game's going to function and things that we know and how fixes work, GGG is still, you know, going to be more knowledgeable about that than what we as fans are. So anyway, in retrospect, I'm excited GGG didn't achieve their plan because now they can pull not just the ideas that they specifically see from D4 and LE, but also all the feedback that they are most definitely getting now that both of those are out from our own community, from their own players and posted onto their Path of Exiles Reddit and website feedback form. So anyway, just food for thought for that one. But uh, I even washed my hands. You're welcome. Yeah, you did. Just a little quick bio break in the middle of it. I was laughing to myself. This is, again, why we don't do this live, because you'd have been staring at a wall of books and shoes for <laughs> three minutes. Did you say bio break? Yeah, that's what people say for bath, bathroom breaks. I like it. I've never heard it before. <laughs> All the people that's, that that's I work with don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely, I feel like it's more in the game community. I don't, I, biology, I don't actually know what it stands for. 
stands for tell me about last epoch yeah i played i played last epoch i um i wasn't sure if i was going to um i don't really have a good reason as to why i wasn't sure if i was going to but i did i did decide to download it and um play it and got a little parch there um <laughs> need a little bit of agua okay so it was fun i did enjoy it uh and it's I, I I like to play it because well one I just like that style of game I like the ARPG style of game I'm That's obviously us. Path of Exile is the one that I prefer in the end but I do I'm definitely open to trying new ones and seeing what other games do you know seeing how some of them do it differently do I like this and not that it matters it's just a personal preference Last Epoch for me is very fun it's much much more forgiving than Path of Exile with regards to your build you know like. You pick your class that's set in stone with your character and then at a certain point you pick your mastery call it ascendancy whatever it is you got three choices uh and and that's set in stone but then the rest of it's not your your tree your skill because the trees are based off your skills as well as your mastery right so like right you unlock skills as you level up and then there's a skill tree for each skill yeah, it was those, like Dragon's Dogma too. I think it was. Yeah, they, or, sorry, they Dragon Age up, too. Dragon, Dragon Age, Age, yeah, and they changed the skill too, right? Based on where you go in the skill tree, completely changes up how the skill works and how it interacts with other skills. Holy sun! That I know. You keep talking. You're just gonna have a camera full of crotch for a second. Love it. Uh, so, uh, and then you have your own mastery skill, and then you can also use the other masteries that you didn't choose, but only to a certain point in the tree, which is cool too, right? So even though you've picked the one of the three masteries you still have access to the other two masteries but only to halfway the halfway point of the tree oh, so you can't so actually it's go like all the way down. half scion for just but like so you could be partial guardian partial inquisitor and full, full whatever, whatever the other, the other one is <laughs> that's right <laughs> you're a yeah. i should have picked the yellow the i mean the you're witch. still limited by <laughs> you're still limited by um total skill points that you get but you do have sure. access to them uh, but it's much more forgiving in the sense that you can respect those points for gold uh, and um, you can respect the skill trees for your skills. And it's actually a really cool system that they have where you're there is a slight penalty to doing so where it de levels you and you got to you get accelerated XP until you catch up with that skill to get all your points back or whatever. Uh, so it, it is much more forgiving in the sense that you can screw up your build and kind of make changes on the fly. And I do like that uh it uh, there there are there are certain things that you just are like quality of life and they're to me they're big deals but they're also like well these are things that could relatively simply be added in in poe too which i would love like the the one of the the funniest ones is when i walk past a waypoint i unlock the waypoint i don't have to click the waypoint i don't know why that's such a oh no but it I is love it that. is like it's a survivability thing too right like you yeah I, my screen doesn't pop up and all of a sudden right. i'm like trying to click something and get out of it so i do like that sometimes uh, um you're not a cat lover we are and cats are dumb this is related you're gonna have to bring me back to it though in case i get go, go down the rabbit hole but i'm already but, lost so <laughs> so a, a cat walks around they'll jump up on the kitchen island that we have i'll be making dinner and then the cat will jump up and i don't like the cat up on the counter so i put the cat down cat jumps back up i put the cat down cat jumps back up and immediately like turns around and like three centimeters from my face is my cat's butt right like it's just how it works so the cat will jump up on my shoulder you've seen the cat on my shoulder a few times in pictures it's like a little parrot well to get there it's like going around and it's like butts like right into my face and so aaron and i we always joke around it's like have you the cat's saying this right as it's turning its butt towards you it's like have you seen this <laughs> right ah oh, crap what way was points. it that you were talking we're talking yes. about waypoints yes yep. so it's kind of like when you click on a waypoint in path of exile now it's not every sometimes you click on a waypoint and it's just like oh it, like nothing pops up it's just it gets bright and you're like oh, that's nice that's nice but then when like they bring up the menu or the world screen on whatever waypoints why why it happens i don't know but it's like every time you click on it, they're like have you seen our waypoint pictures yeah. or have you seen our world screen yeah that's it that's, that's <laughs> the whole reason i interrupted you <laughs> uh, i couldn't agree more don't know what you're talking about but totally get it have you seen uh, this so i i do like that that aspect to me but also super simple like i, I feel like that will hopefully be something in, in poe too i feel like it's unfair to require me to click the waypoint to unlock it uh, sure. if i made it to the waypoint i should have access to the waypoint. i'm sure that'll make release 
even if it's yeah. not like with all the radius stuff that we've heard them talking about in interviews and there has been a lot of radius stuff um i also like that you sure approach an edge to enter the next area and you automatically go into it i don't think that's coming to poe2 because it does remove this ability to control click and reset the zone that kind yeah, of thing right so i i don't see that coming but i do i did like that in last epoch oh, i read um, something about doors though like I not do, they, in, they brought that up a long time ago and they sh and, and it shifted from that which is fine it, they, they had talked about this idea originally in the the launch of of you being able to just walk towards doors and automatically enter them um but in everything we've seen since you're still clicking on the zone to to swap between zones which is fine i would buy that minion yeah like just a pet a zombie pet that's like and opens yeah. every door oh, for you normal doors yeah 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 um the I think the questing system in Last Epoch is is better. It's uh it's more clear to a newer player as to like where to go and what to do sure. for the most part. Um you can tell quite easily on the map as to where you're supposed to go next. There is a lot of dialogue. I didn't read any of it. Like it, it, like lore that. type stuff. I'm like, yeah, yeah, click, click, click. Just let me hit the yellow button so I can continue on with the quest. Yep. Noodle. Um, Noodle. Yeah, somebody else will tell me tell me later. The, the process of going through the quest was fine, but also it's not a super fair comparison because I hate the questing through PoE 1, but I've also done it a thousand times and that's why. So it's not fair really to be like, well, the last Epoch questing I appreciate that. campaign yeah. part is better. Well, it's not. I, I don't know if it's better because I've just done it so many times through PoE. I would ha eventually hate it with last Epoch, but last Epoch does have methods of skipping the campaign once you've gone through it. So there are other ways to, to do it. Um, the trying to think of something, I, I, I like that everything drops identified because it makes mm. the loot filter side of it a lot better. I mean, obviously the loot filter side to me, it's not, there's not a comparison because it is just phenomenally better on last epoch. I mean, if you're comparing what the developer has made to what the developer has made, right? I'm not comparing. Oh, of course. The yeah. You can't compare third what, party. Yeah. You no. know, filter blade is, um, the, the in-game loot filter is it's actually fun to build it it's actually i do enjoy going through and and figuring out how do i want to set this up and the ability to share them with other people and let people download them i like i, I actually think that that's very well done i think there's still a lot of loot that drops on the ground and you do get to a certain point where you're maybe not picking up stuff or you're having but but then at that point you're you're adjusting your loot filter to then not see that stuff because you know you don't need it so i, I that, right. that part's kind of fun it is a tough game it's probably this is it is it designed like sorry i, I have no. a, a loot filter question or two on the fly here so mm -hmm. are you still on loot go filters yeah go oh then you keep going let me write it down no ask you'll remember yep. you have your points written down okay um, no, i don't really oh, no, where is it where is it where's it? okay so can you i don't know if it's the same kind of setup or game but can you is, is the loot filter designed in a way where it expects you to just edit things on the fly? So for example, now I'm going to use Path of Exile terms and just, I don't know, but for last epoch, I want transmutes, right? I want transmutes and then all of a sudden I decide I don't want transmutes anymore. Or let's say I only want, um, like for me, I only want a certain stack of transmutes to show once I'm in, in maps. Is there a way to automate that transmutes only show at certain points or can I just choose that transmutes are on or off? Uh, yeah, you can. You can do it based on uh, where you're at in the, the actual game. But also it's different because currency is not their drop as shards and they are like they're they're used for the crafting side of things. But they are when you pick up one, it sucks up all the ones around you. And that's not a you don't. The, I've actually never looked to see if you can even turn those off because you just wouldn't. You need them like they're right. You, and you, you want an endless supply the of them and eventually you'll use them, whether it's for this character or another. Like I saw That's when right. you were showing me a screenshot or a video uh, in WhatsApp this week, you one of the shards was a chance to poison shard. So I see that they've taken a lot of the different mods that could roll on every single mod that can roll on can drop as a shard see that and that then sounds, can also be broken not, down from the item you can shatter the item to get a chance to get that shard and then that's used to upgrade right. higher tiers of that that modifier now i'm sure last epoch does a fantastic job at organizing all of that 
from a path of exile standpoint thinking about path of exile that's terrifying like that's exactly what i would love in a game but that sounds like with all the different stuff and all the different mods that there are to have that many different shards like that is the most massive or that's eight different currency screens in path of exile it's, yeah but so the way it works in last epoch is you pick up one shard it sucks up all the shards and then from your inventory you hit the button to just transfer all materials and all and your you can materials do that mid map anywhere you want yeah mm. and all of that just transfers into a there is no like there is a stash tab obviously within last epoch and you pay gold to uh, to add additional slots to it uh, but all of the crafting material is in its own thing you never have to do anything with the the shards ever you get a free currency tab yeah because they're yeah they're they're held by you they're not part of your stash and they're always like available that. you can also craft anywhere anywhere you are you hit f on the keyboard and it brings up the forge and that's mm. where all the crafting takes place and because the game like the base game is built around four modifiers two affixes two suffixes no oh, two four I, I don't remember if they call them prefixes but anyway it's got sure, which you can have yeah. you can have four affixes on your item the crafting is it is there is a very in-depth part of crafting which i'm still trying to understand but it's sure. much simpler in the sense that i put my item in let's say it's rolled four affixes it shows me those four affixes it will show an up arrow if i've got the corresponding shard to attempt to try and upgrade that one and then your oh. item has forging potential so let's say i have 26 forging potential if i wanted to upgrade that let's say it was a, a strength affix or something it will tell me this could use between one and 18 forging potential when you do it. So then you do it and then it tells you how much of your forging potential did you lose? And once your forging potential hits zero, you can't forge anymore on that item. Oh, and, and so forge means craft. Yeah. And so okay. like the crafting system is it's def it's definitely simpler to understand, but it's, it's still, I think quite a bit. There's a lot of complexity it, available, right? Like to master it is very difficult, but to sure. understand it is very simple. And I think that's a little bit where, path of exile lacks is that the yeah. understanding of how to craft is difficult how to master is also very difficult like la like last epoch but you have so many more crafting options within path of exile for things that you can sure. do that you you don't do with with last epoch but then they ggg's mentioned that they definitely are aware of that yeah it would be nice for them to make it that more they're, they're easier to understand here we too yeah yeah i mean last epoch's guide is incredible like the ability for me to just hit g and type bleed and understand how bleed works and even to that point oh. like, but also like so Sorry. that that is great but the fact that bleed is just a stat like I'm, I'm i'm singling out bleed here but bleed is just a static stat when i bleed i do 53 damage over three seconds flat it, it's not based on how much damage did i do it's not based on okay whatever it's just based on how fast can i bleed them because it's a there's no limit how many times i can bleed them like it so it, it's it, again it's a bit easier to sort of plan out a build or to think around it or also to make changes on the fly path of excel is not the greatest for if i want to on the fly switch up something and go like oh that would actually be kind of cool to go over there on the right train. thus the massive gem change uh for how gems are equipped from yeah. path of excel one to which two, i think right? will be good i think it's going to make it a little bit simpler to figure stuff out um and then uh, one of the things I like, so I did get to um, end game. I got to empowered monoliths, which is the, the end game. So you get to you get to monoliths and then you get to empowered monoliths, um, which is sort of the, the top tier. You're now doing level 100 mobs and and that you're pushing now to like their, their end game's cool. You're pushing up this corruption and you're doing all these different things with these different areas within the map. And there are dungeons that you can go and run. Uh, one of the th one of the things I really liked about their end game is that their modifiers that will roll into the area that you're going to, which you pick when you when you select where you're going to go, you're seeing how will this affect the map, and then also for how many maps will it? I, I say maps; they're not called maps, but yeah, no. But you're saying maps this, makes it right. makes sense. For how many zones or maps will this modifier last? It'll last for the next three zones. So you, these these modifiers will stack up. But what I really liked about that is none of those modifiers will ever brick your build. There's the, the you'll never get like a, a reflect no life something regen. where you can't, you cannot do it. It will be harder, but there's nothing that will come in there and actually wreck. They're it. enemy perks, not like actual curses against you per se. They're almost, I, I don't think I've ever seen any that were against me. They're always just, they'll affect 
the enemy in these different ways, which I do like. I like because then I don't I well, I have to think about it in the sense of like, how, how am I making this harder for myself? I don't have to think about it in the sense like, oh, I now can't do this anymore. Right. Like I, I I've just wrecked that whatever. Uh, so I like that part of it. The fighting in, in Last Epoch is so I, I actually like I know there's been talk in the past with even GG devs about the telegraphed moves. Uh, I like that when I'm fighting harder, I don't want to be surprised by something. So I like when I know, oh, if I stand in that circle that I'm seeing on the ground, something's about to happen. Oh, so you're talking about an actual shape on the ground, like a triangle or circle that's showing you where the damage is going going where something's about to happen. Uh, I actually appreciate that because it makes the fight uh, easier to understand, at least if I can figure out like, where did I go wrong or what did I miss? Mm. And, And it's not for everything. Like there's, um, Lagos, I think is his name. He's a very, very tough boss. He's like a little bit further past mid. He's towards the end, but not quite at the end. Uh, Very difficult boss to fight, but everything's telegraphed. So I can tell when he's about to do an eye beam, which is kind of like, you know, where uh, Katava brings his arm across the screen. And if you stand in the middle of that, you're you're dead. He does this with his eyeball. He does this like thing that goes across. But I can tell it's very obvious. Very, very, I have to say, Katava's pretty good too. It's just Katava does it quite quickly. <laughs> like if you're in the in the wrong spot and he starts to swipe his arm, you might be in trouble. Uh, this uh, it was easier for me to tell what was about to happen and and then also where I went wrong. It does have a death recap in the sense that it tells you like what you were last damaged by. The reason it works for last epoch is because i'm not getting hit by 40 gajillion things at once so like we've talked about the in the past that a a, a path of exile telling me what last killed me isn't actually super useful because i could have gotten hit by a tick of a bleed mm-hmm. but it wasn't that that actually killed me it was you know all the other things yeah. that were happening the last epoch is definitely way less busy like I, I would imagine there's a lot of people that struggle with last epoch that like that super zoomy feel of path of exile where you're going fast that does not exist there's no Quicksilver flask. There's no, there's nothing. There's only health flasks in last epoch. And so I like and don't like that. I'm kind of torn there. Like I like it in the sense that it's much simpler. I only have to hit one button. It's only life flasks, health potions they're called, but there's nothing else. Everything else is around my gear and my build, not around the flasks that I choose to incorporate into the build. So Mm -hmm. I do like it for its simplicity, but I also like the complexity of Path of Exile when it comes to that style of thing. And, but I did find myself bored of the end game quicker than I did in Path of Exile. And I don't know if it's just my, well, so again, I don't know that this is necessarily fair to last epoch because I have played so much Path of Exile this past league, this affliction league, Ah. that I can't tell if it's just that I'm, I'm kind of ARPG burnout. Well, yeah, like, and, and it's this weird mentality of like, what, what am I doing this for now? Like I, the, you know, it's funny. I was trying to think about this this week. Cause I was trying to understand where I was at right now with games and stuff. When we're talking about dragon's dogma coming out, when we've talked about, we, we both love Elden ring and souls games there, there's a direction to that game. There's a start, there's a finish and you're going in a direction. And even if they, you do finish them, they've got like a new game plus style game, but you're still going start to finish. Remind me in 15 minutes to decide about my pre-orders. <laughs> Dragon's Dogma. So <laughs> you totally remind me forgetting and forgetting and forgetting. But there's Thank a you. start and there's a finish and it gives me a goal and a, a way to play the game. And and I love about ARPGs is that doesn't exist. My goal is to just make my build better right. and accumulate more stuff. But maybe I, my mind's just not there. I, but I just found myself in Last Epoch going, okay, I've I could keep farming but I'm farming to just make the farming easier. Like I, sure. I don't know. It's a, it was well, a that's, weird that's what every ARPG experience is like, but every ARPG masters it differently. So let me ask you a couple questions about that. Do mm-hmm. you feel like whatever you're, it, it's your first time playing, so it might not be a fair question. Did you well, have an first, idea yeah. of what you wanted your build to be before you played it? And then you designed your build around that hope of an idea. Again, you don't, it's not I like switched Path a of few Exile, times. Right? Okay. So no. But you were satisfied with what your final build was. You enjoyed the concept of it and you enjoyed the gameplay of it. Yes. Yes. Or I did. were you just kind of picking the best of what was available to you? I just based wanted to try something your... new because I haven't played in such a long time. They had this okay. falconer build that had a bird. It seemed fun. 
And Sweet. so I kind of went from more around that Borderlands one. Yeah, and it was I like I played multiple different versions and set up my skills a little differently each time. And that part is fun, but I just got to a point where I was like, well, I'm doing you can always make the game harder in Last Epoch. It's the same with Path of Exile. You can always progressively make the content harder and harder and harder. And I think even more so in Last Epoch, where there's no there's no top of that scale because you can increase this corruption, it's called, and then that exponentially like there's no end. You can always make the game harder and harder. But I got to a point where I was like, well, I'm doing, I think I was around 200 corruption, which I know is not super high, but I was doing it fine. And so then I was kind of like, well, what, what am I doing? What's the point now? Is it just to continue to push the corruption higher so that I'm just doing the harder content, but for to, to what end? Like I couldn't, I was having a hard time in my head wrapping around what was the purpose of me playing. True. I also, I played an offline mode because I knew their servers were having a problem. I did not know that that meant that you were forever in offline mode, which does make sense. I understand why they do that. Uh, when you play offline mode, your character is stored on your computer, which means you could manipulate it, cheat, do whatever. Where you're playing on online mode, you're on their server. You can't cheat. You can't manipulate your character. So I understand why you can't have this combination of both, but I didn't realize that. So it also meant that I wasn't playing. It's actually pretty cool. Their offline mode still let you chat. You can still see general chat and whatever, but you couldn't interact with other players. But they do have some very cool stuff with regards to this end game where you can very much focus on the solo so, solo cell found I'm playing by myself or you go to a different faction which is much more based on I'm a trader I'm a merchant I'm going to interact with other people and that was really really well done where I could play my way by myself and feel the effect of buffing the drops specifically that I would get by playing by myself because I was lacking the ability to trade or get items from other players that was really cool. Like, I actually really like that because it felt good to play by yourself. Like, I actually thought that part that they, they have these two factions at the end, the way that they did them was very, very good. Cool. This has actually been quite encouraging for me for PoE too, because a lot of the things that you've been talking about are things that GGG has already referenced and acknowledged in regards to their planning and hopes for PoE too. Everything except for item weight, in-game filter, default filter, 700 new items, and you were hoping you're not going to need a new filter. You know, whether you believe in God or not, you're crossing yourself, right? <laughs> so, um, but that's really cool to hear. That's really cool to hear. Uh, another question about your build. Did you feel like you had achieved everything you wanted with that build? And it was kind of like, were you still excited about your build? Or were you daydreaming about another build? No, end. I was, I wasn't, I was fine with the build. The build was fine. And I was, it, I was struggling actually with myself because I didn't have a desire to try a different character, which I know that I would love to try other characters, but I think I just got into my head. Like I, I couldn't, I couldn't understand why I'd be doing it. And it was actually why I stopped playing Helldivers. I was playing Helldivers too with Josh a lot, but it became the purpose of playing was to unlock things that would make continuing to play easier. Yeah. And I couldn't, I don't know why I was just having this mental block of like understanding what the hell, why am I, what, like I'm going to play more to make it easier, which that's, is kind of the same thing with an ARPG really. Right. right. Like yeah. That's POE. You're playing to make the game easier to progress further, but I just was in a weird mental space. And that's why I was like, all right, give me some brain games to play on my phone. But I, I think that they've done last epoch very good for me. Path of Exile is still a more enjoyable game, but Last Epoch is way easier to just pick up and play. Sure. Uh, I, I never felt ever, I never ever felt like I was swarmed by enemies, like I was screwed. Um, oh, that's interesting. I was able to understand every single enemy I fought and what they did. There's, There was no, you know, crazy weird modifiers that have a name that I couldn't figure out, right? Like they... It, they spell it out very easily so you can understand what's happening within the game, where to go in the game, and how to potentially counter enemies in the game. And I did like that because especially for me, I have played before, but I haven't played in forever. So it was nice and easy to pick up, but I found the end game not as engaging for me mm -hmm. because I just... I, I, yeah, I don't, Do you think that they don't have enough item bases or mod options that, you know, like it I was... I love their it crafting. Was, Sure, but was it too easy? Not necessarily too easy, but was it easy enough to get not your perfect items, but your really good items that you weren't motivated 
to push farther? Well, I think one of the things they do very well is one, they have like a one hundredth of the amount of uniques in the game. Like they have yeah. way less uniques. And they have the same amount of uniques that GGG had 10 years ago. <laughs> and the, but they have also have this ability for you to craft with uniques, but in a very end game way, which I was kind of fun. And it's it's very RNG based. And that's why based on which, you know, um, faction you pick can have some effect on on things that can drop. But the I found the crafting side of it and the drop side of it so much better because there was so much less that could drop but i could build my filter around okay that's what i want to find and so i'm going to set my filter up to only show me that stuff and then hope when it drops that it's got something that i can use and, and that was actually really fun because the stuff drops identified you can filter based on the tier of the modifiers that are rolling so if i want to make sure something has let's say at least two tier six rolls it goes upwards right so instead of yep. going downwards with poe it goes upwards t6 I is the, the best item to have at whatever t7 technically but it was you could sure. only get tier six and seven through drops only but then that meant oh, that i could see maybe, i love that i love that right. like if you know 35 percent movement speed is drop only right and then when you pick one of the factions that i picked that was solo cell phone based it increased the chances of if something was to drop, it would have a tier seven modifier on it or something like that. So the, the, the progression of gear felt really good. And I, I was having fun trying to find the items, but then I also, I think I just got burned out honestly of just the ARPG style of just continuously going over through this, continuously going over through this wait till items drop. Um, but I, I think it's it is a really fun game. There are some, you know, like I said, there's some little nuances that I would love to see in Poe too. But I also think it's okay to have two totally different games. Yeah. I, like I don't count D4 because I think it was bad. It was not good. It didn't compete <laughs> really in the I ARPG. Feel, I, I feel bad for the people, not Blizzard themselves, but the people that made Diablo and what made Diablo two so amazing. And mm -hmm. like, it's whether they're still at the company or not, it was their baby. It was their franchise. It blew the genre open. Amazing. And, and so you always secretly want that game to do well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, it sucks to see something that was such a pinnacle and like our favorite game that we have a podcast about comes from their love of D two. And to see, I mean, it's good for GGG that, that Blizzard's just gotten worse and totally worse at making the yeah. NARPG, but it, it, I don't know, you, you kind of want Which, it. Just for the people that were involved originally, you always want there to be a little success for them. Like Jade uh, Raymond, yeah. I'll always cheer for Jade Raymond because of her original plan for Assassin's Creed. I think, I mean, D2 was is like the gold standard on what everything was built on after that, and Blizzard just sort of whatever they shifted their mentality a little bit and that's fine i i think it's pretty fair at least in my opinion it's pretty fair to say there's two games that compete in this arpg genre and yeah. i don't want them to be the same so it's kind of fun to have a different experience you know i think there's things where a game can look at another game and go like oh that actually is just a quality of life benefit we should look at doing that versus we should copy and do what they sure. do i i don't want that so last epoch has a very good spot in, in the genre, I think they've done a really, really great job. I know they had a really big struggle when it first launched with the online, with the multiplayer. It doesn't affect me because I wasn't playing it multiplayer it's anyway. Not, those aren't game designs. Those are back-end infrastructures. Yeah, that they you just have to figure stuff out. Right. And I mean, give them a break. Budget, it's the first it time they've ever done anything like that. Like this 1.0 release was the online multiplayer side of it. Pretty yeah. tough to test. They had a monster surge of players, right? So it was not unexpected. Should, that should they have been a beta. Should have been a beta. But they were going to struggle. Uh, I, I, I did really like it. Uh, there are things that I would love to see in Path of Exile too, but just quality of life based stuff. I, I like the fact that the gameplay feels different. The progression feels different. The crafting is different. And I loved Last Epoch's crafting system, but I want something different in Path of Exile. I don't want to feel like I'm doing the same thing. So. Uh, totally. It was fun. It was it, it's a very well made game. I love the differences in all the characters. I love the feeling of the differences between these masteries or ascendancies, whatever you want to call them. And um, the freedom of switching up my build and not feeling like I was I would never play that game hardcore, though. Like, it, but it's no different than PC hardcore. Sure. Or sorry, uh, Path of Exile hardcore. Yeah. I'm just not into the hardcore side of things. 
I have a question about classes before we sign off. Yep. Um, but you have to remind me about that. Um, because there's one comment I want to make, and I know I will forget this one. So I'm going to say this first. Um, mm -hmm. So I was going through my saved Reddit posts for Path of Exile, and I saw that there was one, like, because remember, I've been complaining about the Reaper and its individual damage and all that kind of stuff for a little bit. I think I still think it needs to do a little bit more damage by default. But I saved a post of someone when the Reaper first came out and everybody was excited about it, but everybody was crushing it like it just wasn't good enough. And then there was a video of somebody absolutely destroying Cyrus with the Reaper. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm just going to keep that. That's like, that's me. I saved that post never to click on it again, but just to remind myself, just a reference. Like, yeah. stop being a whiny baby. You could probably figure something out or sure. the skill just isn't meant for your play for style, you. right? Mm -hmm. That was what it was so that I wouldn't just always like eh, about it. So I saved that post. I'm going through and I'm like, you know what? I don't need that anymore. I never complain about the game anymore. I don't need this reminder. So I'm getting rid of some of the stuff, doing some inbox cleanup per se. And I see that that post is three years old. So it's three years plus. And I'm like, the Reaper has been out for three years? What the heck? So I I feel like when you bought me Last Epoch for its alpha or whatever it was, I feel like that was only a year or two ago. It could that was been, a long time. <laughs> it could have been forever ago for all I know. When mm -hmm. I played the game, it seemed... Now, I don't know who started Last Epoch, where it came from, but... It honestly seemed because by the time it came out, like we didn't have this hope of GGG employees like Jonathan, or Rishi or Rory coming to us with the sequel news and being like, yes, we're willing to change our mentalities on these. We're happy to. These are things we're excited to change. We didn't have that when Last Epoch was first announced and coming out and you could get the early access. So you, I got the impression with Last Epoch that it was made by disgruntled GGG players or disgruntled Path of Exile players. It totally seems like it. They have so much similarity in everything that they do, but the big difference was all the quality of life stuff that Path of Exile didn't have at the time. Like it was just like the ID system, right? The filter system. So much of it was so similar, just with the quality of life changes. Obviously, the game has evolved. Too, yeah, that you're probably there. There's probably some truth to that, and not that it's disgruntled GG, but people that played that want to change something. But also keep in mind that's what Path of Exile is. Exactly, that is them taking exactly, a game and yes. sort of altering altering it to their style and how they want to see it. Yep. D three comes out, and uh, the three of them, or I guess four, because nobody talks about what. What's his name? Was his name Brian, the American investor? I forget his name. Anyway, the fourth guy. Anyway. Uh, the four of them get together and be like, wow, D3 sucks. All right, in the garage we go. Um, but anyway, um, it seems like that's how it started. But now it seems to have taken on its own life. Totally has. yeah. And so Something. like at the beginning, like let's say you and I are disgruntled PoE players and we make our own game with all the quality of life stuff. Well, that's awesome. We make this wicked game, but then all GGG needs to do is snap their fingers and they add that quality of life stuff. And all of a sudden our game is obsolete and you feel so bad for the people that made that game. They're just trying to do good. They're just trying to make a good game for people. And then it's just boop. all it needed was a quick decision. Sometimes those people that start these new games forget that this company can just make a quick decision and everything that you're working towards, they're just going to do better. And so uh, I'm happy that Last Epoch has really seemed to turn into, sure, maybe it originally, I don't know if it did, but it seemed to start off as like just, in their opinion, a better version of Path of Exile. But it really seems to have turned into its own own thing, own entity. And uh, no I matter what, I, I think no matter what PoE2 does, Last Epoch seems to like have its own personal identity and do well. I, I think they've done a really good job of finding the area within the ARPG genre that they fit. And sure. I think that's great. I think that is really good. I think having competition and, you know, similar style games, but with a, a big enough feeling of difference between them is a great thing for, for us. You're the kids playing. Yeah. It won't be in the recording, but stupid kids having fun. <laughs> Can I ask you one question? I know this yeah, is yeah. a long episode. Okay. Yeah. So just, this will tie up all our last epoch stuff into one episode, unless it comes back randomly. Mm -hmm. Um, Last thing I wanted to ask, GGG has its classes, it has its ascendancies, and yes, experienced players pick those, even new players, you pick them based on whatever theme of the class that you know think. Where you're going. Go right. for it. So, mm -hmm. but GGG's theory crafting, yes, it revolves around the ascendancies, but there's a massive generic tree that is 
just as influential, if not more, than the actual ascendancies. Like if you remove ascendancies from Path of Exile, you still have a game. Like I don't think that hinders the game. I love the ascendancies. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's needed. Like if you got rid of ascendancies in Path of Exile, you still have the exact same game with the same theory crafting options, with the same amazing like you still have an infinite amount of theory crafting options all every other well not every other every other a- arpg that i have played is very class focused and there's only certain things that certain classes can do and if there is a generic tree it's very small and the game revolves very specifically around this is the class you chose these are the options of that class and this is where your theory crafting is does last epoch have a large generic aspect of theory crafting like a general tree or whatever it is or is it very class centered okay so f- the first thing i'm going to say is with last epoch when you're picking your character in the beginning you can see all of your options before you create the character I so i can you, last right? epoch, so you can or see whoever makes last epoch. Or you can see all those options before you create the character um when you create the character you have there is no generic tree there's no generic tree in the sense that all characters, all classes share something. When you create your character, your class has a class tree. So in my case, I picked a rogue. The rogue has a rogue class tree. That rogue class tree is not huge, but it's decent. You know, you have different different ways that you can sort of move along it. But where the majority of your points get spent are within the mastery. So like just to give you an example, I went the falconer route of rogue. I have 20 points in rogue because that's what's required to get you into the masteries. Okay. And then everything is into like 60 something points are in the Falconer mastery. And I think I've got like eight in the other two masteries, but the, the, the class itself is a, a much smaller tree that you're sure. mostly using. I think as I got closer, like higher level, like I think I got to 90 something as you get higher then you might go and fill a little bit into the class tree if there were some things that you wanted to pick up in there but the main focus of the class tree is to unlock the mastery tree so that you can then dump your points into that mastery that you've picked but there is nothing still very so okay yeah that makes that that's a good answer to the question i think i understand that quite well um then the skills you pick up are they from are they like they're unlocked by level and are they unlocked that as a class like there's only certain Both. skills per class or are there things like gems or whatever else they would use to that are generic for everybody so there's no skills that are generic for everybody when you start as your class you unlock skills for your class then you pick okay. your ascendancy or your mastery yeah but the mastery unlocks skills based on your level within that within that so like there are some skills that if i don't choose or sorry based on how many points you put into it so if i don't choose to go one of the routes of rogue i went falconer but the other two there are skills in there that i won't unlock because i can't i can't unlock them because i didn't choose that mastery but then also keep in mind in my in my rogue class plus mastery i have 15 maybe 16 skills but i'm using five of them Sure. So it is very, it's, it's all class focused, class specific, but you have a lot of variety. Right. And then, and then also again, based on what you're using, because you're getting a skill tree for the skills that you're actively using. Right. And then so the, the more skills you use have a them, skill tree and then, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Then, then you're unlocking more options within that skill tree. So and it's, it's a very, the, it's a very cool system. Uh, mastery ascendancy section where it's difficult to respect. Correct. No, it's just gold per per point, but you can't change your mastery. So uh, I so you can't you're, you're falconer, a falconer forever. I'm a falconer, but okay. I can respec the tree for the falconer and the the rogue and all that. As long as I keep the rules, right? If I need twenty points in rogue in order to unlock falconer, I can't respec to less than twenty points in rogue. I have to keep the rules, sure. but I can just pay gold to take them point by point out of where I wanted them, and then to take them out of the skill tree for your skill you can do that on the fly whenever you want but again if i had one of my skills up to level 20 which had fully unlocked the you know where i want to go in the tree when i respec it it has there's rules that say it's going to drop down to this level or if i bring a new one in it will start at this level and then it gains uh, increased xp until it catches up 
So it like it's a good system in the sense that there is a slight penalty to to changing that, but it doesn't change it doesn't stop you from playing uh because you, you know, like in Path of Exile, for example, if I go and pick up a new skill while I'm starting it at level one, it's gonna take me a minute to actually get it up to the point where it's gonna be competing for damage. That doesn't really happen in, in Last Epoch. You are good at answering questions. I'm trying. Hopefully, I'm, I'm sure I'm getting stuff wrong. People are like, actually, nah, who cares? It's not. It's not our primary game. It's a filler. It's and fun. We might not even play it until like we have. Oh, what do we have? Today is March first. Oh no, today is not the thirtieth. Yeah, stupid watches March that 1st. don't understand <laughs> February. February is. Well, we hey, congratulations to heck? everybody. All, any listeners that had a baby yesterday, right? Yeah. February 29th. Or a birthday. Love it. Love it. What? Or what a birthday. Did I say, did I say I had a baby? I'm saying or a birthday. Yeah, or a birthday, yeah. but you know, the, like the hype's gone now. <laughs> or dead, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah. For those that died on uh, February 29th, congratulations to the survivors. You only, every you four only years. have to think about them once every four years. Right. <laughs> right on, right on. Wow. So somebody that's probably happened to one of our listeners and they're just like, so sorry. F you so guys. Sorry. <laughs> F you guys. It hurts. Uh, uh, anyway, um, thank you, Justin. And thanks for letting this episode go longer. Sorry for those that were hoping Open for a short episode since it's late. I don't know if people look forward to longer yappy episodes late into the league or if they look forward to like, thank goodness it's late in the league. They won't have anything to talk about. But uh, anyway, we got we an just hour go and a half of go. unedited time this morning. Mm -hmm. And I desperately have to go to the bathroom a second Again. time. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, please. Let's wrap this up. Thanks everybody yep. for hanging out with us. Uh, Forever XL3 230. I'm Justin AK Tags. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm Tyler Wrecker of Days. I was so excited for when we were going, when it was 3.30, and then I'm like, oh, next episode's 3.31, and I'm getting those cards ready. I'm like, we're close to another rep digit already. <laughs> no. Nope. Also, one more time, Forever Exiled, I'm Justin AK Tags. And I'm Tyler Wrecker of Days. Line that up, <laughs> Maybe buddy. I'll take that out, but good lord, I gotta start counting again. Uh, patrons, thanks so much for your support. We'll catch you in After Dark, everybody else. We'll see you next week with BK in 231. If you're looking for more information, you can find it down below. We got a website for everxl.com. We're on Twitter for everxl. We have a very fun Discord. Get in there, say hi, be part of the community. And Patreon's other way to support the podcast down below and on our website. And you know, maybe it's just time for us to just take a minute. <laughs> you know what? No, okay. You can, <laughs> Thanks, I, I, I'm leaving. Goodbye, everybody. Justin, you go as long as you want. I can't hold it anymore. <laughs>